Well, hello, we're back again. This is week number 13, unlucky number 13 of my weight loss journey. I'm assuming you have uh, listened to some of these weight loss journey episodes before. You've already listened to episode number zero. And if weight loss is not the right topic for you, you will skip along, move along. There are over five hundred episodes of this podcast. Lots of good, good stuff. Today, we're going to dive right in. Um, First of all, if you're listening to this, let me know. Reach out. Send me an email. Go to couchactive.com, my website. Find me there. I've got email, phone number. It's all right there. You can get a hold of me pretty easily. Um, And if you've been thinking to yourself and thinking, gosh, I really want to do this. I really want to do the healthy weight loss in a way that gives me more energy, blah, 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 blah. We know the drill, right? We know the drill. If you want to do it right and you're ready, or you're wondering if you're ready, reach out. I would, it would be my honor. I am a weight loss specialist. That is my newest of certifications I have collected. Also a functional aging specialist, a Pilates certified group fitness, personal training certified degree in education. <laughs> <laughs> and more than 20 years of uh, corporate experience. So if you're a corporate person and you've worked in corporate, you know, some of those names like Microsoft, <laughs> uh, I've done lots and lots of years of that too. So I get you. I get you. I understand the realities. If you've been a single parent before, I get you. I understand. I've spent more than 12 years being a single parent. Um, and I'm a brand spanking new empty nester. So if that's you, I get you, empty nester friends. Um, holy moly, the emotional roller coaster there. And if you live alone, um, that's what I do right now. Live totally alone. Kind of love it. <laughs> uh, and you're like, how do I cook for one person? I get that too. So uh, yeah, my life, I tell you. I've not asked for all these experiences. Maybe you could say I've created them in my own way. Maybe you could say it's, you know, how I was raised in my childhood and my ability or inability to make good or bad decisions for my life, which has led me to a plethora of life experiences. I'm at a good spot now where I can look back at all of it, sit up a little taller, hold my chest high and say, yeah, I did it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, let's get in. Let's get into the real stuff here. So this is week number 13 of my weight loss journey. So I'm reporting out on 13 weeks of a focused, I am going to lose weight in a way that retains as much muscle mass as possible, makes me as healthy and fast and strong as possible. Week number 13. We've had so many of these weeks um, that this week we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do another uh, round of rapid fire because we've got some of the things that I don't want to lose sight of. They're that kind of that same old, same old. These are the things I'm doing every week that support this. So I'm going to rapid fire through those. Then we'll go through the things that are um, like topics I want to hit in a little more detail of things that have either supported or hurt uh, my progress and kind of look into those. And that's where the real meat will come in for you to say, oh yeah, I relate to this this thing of letting go of fears of the future. We're gonna talk about that today. Um, I relate to the thing of feeling like the scale is moving too slow. Uh, yep. I relate to like looking and dissecting what am I actually eating? You know, we're gonna look, we're gonna look at all that. Then this week for the first time in 13 weeks, now that I've really kind of got my food dialed in, I'm going to do a second rapid fire section. And this one is going to talk about exactly what I ate this week for the first time. I'm going to, I mean, we've talked about things I've eaten. We've talked about, you know, things that are good and bad. We've talked about, we shouldn't moralize food as good or bad, like all that. I'm going to actually go through and be like, Monday, we ate this, Tuesday, this, Wednesday, this, Thursday, this, boom, 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 boom. So you get kind of a sense of like, what is this, what does success actually look like? And, and you'll be surprised. It's not perfect eating. It's more about consistency. So we'll talk about that. 
Then we'll go through at the end of the episode, I'll tell you exactly what my weight was when I started this week. I do a Monday to Monday weigh in. The reason I do Monday to Monday is because my stupid food tracker will only do a Monday to Monday report out for me. (laughs) I would prefer to do a Friday to Friday report out because Friday is more my lower weight because I can be more consistent during the week. And then the weekend, if I'm ever going to, you know, Uh, give myself a little more freedom. It's the weekend, which means Monday is my higher weight. But you know what? (laughs) I got to get over it. I got to deal and not not worry about it. So anyhow, so it's that Monday to Monday. So you already know my Monday weight from last week, if you listen to last week's podcast. Uh, But we'll give you that Monday to Monday, let you know what the weight loss was, what my total weight loss is. And then we'll go through what I've got ahead of me planning. This is super important planning for the weeks ahead and uh, identifying things that are going to be barriers to success, what I'm going to do to overcome them um, and uh, go through that. So let's do it. First of all, rapid fire, rapid fire section. Here are the things I pretty much that support success every single week. So I'm hardly drinking any alcohol at all. I'm staying hydrated. I'm managing my stress every single day. I'm spending time in a hot tub to de-stress, relax, and help heal my fibromyalgia. I take at least one, usually two daily strolls outside. I used to call them walks, but they're more strolls. They're about a half mile each. Again, a de-stressor thing. I'm connecting with people and I'm staying committed to supporting growing relationships in my life that are deep, that are meaningful, and um, working on finding those people who are also interested in personal growth and deep, meaningful relationships. I'm playing the long game on this one because these kind of relationships take a long time to build and they don't necessarily stick around forever, even though you kind of hope they will. So I'm working on that. Uh, and that's a huge mental health piece for me. I'm exercising. Duh. I teach all these classes. Um, (laughs) I'm making sleep a huge priority. I'm napping whenever I need to nap. And I have the luxury of being able to do that for the most part. My access to healthy food is really good. I do not live in a food, healthy, nutritional food desert. And I make sure that the food I do purchase is healthy that comes into my house. I'm balancing my macros. I'm still getting the right amount of protein, specifically protein, fat, and fiber is my focus. And I'm being religious about sticking to that. It takes a little math to do, but totally worth it. I am committing to my minimum fiber intake. I am making gosh darn sure that I get the right amount of fiber in every day, even if it throws me over my calories for the day. My kitchen is now food safe. I have no crap in my kitchen. I am planning my meals ahead of time. Most days I get my meals totally planned and I figured out what meals are safe and good meals for me. I have meals in my head that I like, not literally, (laughs) I have meals in my head that I know are safe meals. So I know what I can eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and have a good picture in my mind of what those meals look like. So I can be in any environment, restaurant, friend's house, whatever, and I can pick foods that are of the options in front of me and make sure that they fit as best as they can into what I know works best for me. I am also keeping my sights at the six week trend. So I am doing my damnedest to not let an up and down in the scale day to day wig out my mental health. I am making sure that that scale is just a data point and I'm looking at overall six week trends minimum of that weight. So that is, there we go. Those are some of the same o same o's. It's a lot. And it's why I do not like it when the weight loss industry says, hey, you want to lose weight? Start right now today. And in three weeks, you could lose 21 pounds. Like, no, (laughs) no, 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 no. There's, There's a lot to this to do it well and do it right. Okay. Let's take a look at some of our new topics for this week. This one, I, 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 we'll just go into it. I'm letting go of fear. I'm working on letting go of fears of the future and my future. 
I've had a lot of big changes in my life. And stress, stress eating is definitely a thing for me. And having fears about what does my future hold? What does my future actually bring? What does this actually look like? Is a stressful thing for me. And I've had to be really careful that I don't ruminate. I mean, I've in the last year, I moved twice in a year. Yeah, big moves. I got divorced. I became an empty nester. My son's just about to go off to college. And this couch to active that I do, I absolutely love, 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 love couch to active. Love it to death. It's the highlight. And it still is a new business and it's still not generating the revenue. And I'm just, I'll put it out there on the table, not generating the revenue to pay all my bills. And so I'm, but why do I do it? Because it's worth it. And I really, really believe in the mission. And so a big part that I have to remind myself to manage my stress around all this is it'll work out. It always does. It always, always does. And if I end up getting a, you know, a second corporate side gig, thank God I can do that. That's, that's part of what enables this is, is uh, I can go and get a, a corporate gig, make some, make some real cash, I call it. And so I can still keep doing couch to active stuff, which is actually where my heart and passion is. Um, working on letting go of the fears of the future. And part of what I've done is I've actually sat down and made a list of Lynn, what are you afraid of? Like, what actually are your fears? And I, and I put those down on a list. Here are the things I'm actually afraid of. One is sometimes I feel like I get some anxiety around the future and I just, it's just generalized, you know, uh, fears or anxiety of like, what about, what about, what about, right? Some of that is my strength and excess because I'm really good at planning out the future. I'm a great project manager. I can see what could go wrong in the future and I can plan for it. So it's it's really a strength. I don't I don't float through the life aim I don't throw float through this thing called life aimlessly and I don't necessarily get blindsided with stuff. I can usually see it coming, which is great, but it also causes me a little anxiety. So I'm learning, I'm practicing writing it down. What is it? What is it that's causing me? to be fearful? What am I afraid of? And then I do two things. I take those things. I say, okay, here's one thing I'm afraid of. And then I say, okay, is that fear even real? Could like, will that actually even happen? And let's say it does happen. What's your worst case scenario? What's your worst case scenario here? What's actually like, if this actually happens, how bad is it really going to be? And what if that doesn't happen and things go well? What does that look like? And when I do that, every stinking time I do that, I leave feeling like I have nothing to be afraid of. I'm totally fine. Life is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, so lots of work around that. What does that have to do with health, wellness, and weight loss? Well, if you've been around with me and you've listened to all these, you know it's all, it's all related. It's all, all related. And ultimately this is where it becomes less about weight loss and a scale number going down and more about just really living and loving the life you have or having, loving the life you have. And so, um, so that's been, that's been a big, a big topic for me. And I did make a decision this week. So, um, you guys know, got divorced, moved, signed a one-year lease. I'm in a city, a new city. I know nobody except the kids at the hot tub, <laughs> which I love the kids at the hot tub. They're great. Um, yes. Uh, somewhat befriended the, the manager of the whole complex too. He's great. <laughs> um, but there's the reason I moved here was to get my son near his college. And now he's going to a new college and he's gone. So I have no family in the area. I have 
My nearest friends are half hour to 40 minutes away. There is no reason for me to live here anymore, but I made a decision. I made a decision that I am going to stay here another year. So I renewed my lease. I'm staying here another year. And the reason why is because I do not want to interrupt my life again. I want to see what can I do uninterrupted. And this is a a quote I came across that I just adore. It's, who are you uninterrupted? Who are you uninterrupted? If your life is not interrupting you, and at every path of the way, there, there aren't distractions, there aren't things getting in the way, there isn't a pandemic, there isn't a big old, you know, crisis in the news, there isn't a big old crisis in your life. If you are uninterrupted, which is pretty much what I am right now, who are you and what can you do? And I really think that for me, it's pretty gosh darn amazing. And so for the first time, starting last week, I am an empty nester. I don't even have to care for a house. I don't even have a dog. I don't have like nothing. And so I can live uninterrupted and be super focused, which brings a lot of responsibility too of like, oh, now it's all on me. And now I have to take responsibility. And now I can't just be like, yeah, but I'm raising a kid. Yeah, but my life is crazy. Yeah, but I'm going through a divorce. Yeah, but my fibromyalgia. Yeah, but my collagenous colitis. Yeah, but my limited lung function. Like those are all gone. (laughs) And now it's really a privilege and a little scary of taking full responsibility for me. So that's why I'm staying. I'm parked here for at least another year. And it just seems like exactly the right thing to do. So letting go of fears of the future. Beyond this one year, what city could I move to anywhere on the planet? Like Couch to Active, it's online. I could do it from anywhere. <laughs> I could move anywhere, but I just, right now, I'm just, it's this year, next month. That's what I'm focused on. Okay. The next topic, let's go back to the scale, the bathroom scale. Oh yes. The glorious bathroom scale. I have had a weird, just in the last week or two, mindset issue with the bathroom scale. I go in, weigh myself in the morning, and I've been thinking like Monday, Tuesday of last week, oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. It's not going anywhere. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'll never go any, anywhere. It's not true. It's not true. But mindset wise, I step on it and I have this like, bah, I'm stuck again. This is where I went back to my data and I'm like, are you actually stuck? No, I'm not. I'm still on the path. The scale is still going down. But when I see the same number for three or four days, my brain is like, you're stuck. Oh no, you're stuck. Is this it? Are you? (laughs) So I'm working on that. I'm working on that. So um, I need to be my own coach and I need to make sure I don't get neurotic about it. Catch myself and make sure I keep an eye on my 30 day or at least my 10 day trends. And so when we get to the bottom of this, and I tell you about the uh, what the scale did this week, you'll see, I don't want to be a spoiler, but I'm not stuck. So scale's been interesting. Clothes. Last week, I actually pulled out my clothes and decided they didn't fit. Then I realized really, all I did was grab my skirts to see if they would fit around my behind. Not there yet. But I did pull out a measuring tape and my hips have lost three inches. Is that right? Two and a half, three inches. My waist has lost like three inches, like definitely going in the right direction. So, and that was 12 weeks in. That was the first time I measured myself. So then I went back to, I had a little event to go to. I went and saw a cello play in a cathedral in Seattle. I was, that was pretty cool. And, um, I went back to that pile of clothes again that I'd pulled out of the box. And I thought, you know what, Lynn, you you didn't actually try on any of these shirts. And I found out that I had about 10 really cute tops that fit me again. 
And um, so that was really exciting. So I was like, okay, I am fitting back into some of my old clothes. And so now I have a big old pile of clothes on the floor in my closet because I became such a minimalist that I don't have enough hangers to hang these clothes on. So I got to go buy some more hangers because in my move, I just got, I was like, I'm getting rid of everything I don't need. And any hangers that don't match all the other hangers, I'm getting rid of them. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh, cred, now I don't have enough hangers. So uh, gonna go, gonna go buy some, uh, buy some hangers for that. So that's pretty cool. All right. The next piece is my kitchen gadget, the creamy. So there is this thing I've hinted about a few times called the Ninja Creamy, made by the same company that does the Ninja Blender and all that. And the Ninja Creamy, I am loving it, but I still don't know if I would recommend it for everyone. And, and here's what it is. It's basically this, another big old kitchen gadget machine. And, and you know, I like, I'm a kitchen minimalist. I don't even own a toaster. I don't own an air fryer. I don't own a, I can't even think of what they're called, uh, Instapot. Like I don't, I don't own any of that. Like my kitchen is very minimalist. So I bought this thing. It's about the size of a blender. It's big. And when you're in a tiny apartment, that's a huge appliance to bring in. And you, you can only do one thing with it. You can only make essentially ice cream. But what I'm doing is I'm making my protein smoothies into ice cream. So what you do with this Ninja Creamy is it has um, these pint size containers. So these plastic containers that are really almost exactly the size of a pint of ice cream. Um, yep, just like that. And you take this pint size container and you put in, I've been putting in essentially what I would put in for a smoothie. And then you freeze it solid. So imagine your, you know, your protein powder, Um, I've got some high fair life, which is a high protein milk I put in, I put in like 50 grams of spinach, which is a lot. It's like a whole pint of spinach, but you blend it all in and spinach blends down to nothing. Uh, cocoa powder, uh, uh, stuff like that. So then I have a very low calorie, high protein with some fat and some fiber for my breakfast. So you freeze it. That thing is rock solid. You stick it in this a machine and it has a special way of blending it. And it is so loud. It sounds like I'm running a saw in my kitchen um, or maybe a really, it's like almost louder than a blender and you, it, it makes it. So it's like this thick, amazing ice cream. So I feel like I'm sitting down on my couch eating a pint of ice cream for breakfast. And that is super awesome. I love it. And for the summer, I'm loving it. A whole pint of ice cream though makes me freezing cold. So I don't know if I'm going to like this for the winter. And I also think I might get sick of it after a while. I might be like, ah, okay, I've had a hundred of these. I'm done with it. So I'm thinking it might be a fad. So if you're looking at that Ninja Creamy thing, if you love, 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 love the texture of ice cream and you already do protein smoothies already, and you love the idea of feeling like you're eating ice cream, even though it's a protein smoothie, this could be a great thing to try out. But this thing is like 200 bucks. Plus you want to buy extra containers. So I'm about 300 bucks in on this by the time it's all said and done. The amount of work, if you say, I'm gonna, um, I would say the amount of work on these The morning of is really easy because you pull the pint out of the freezer, you stick it in the machine, you blend it, done. Super easy. It's like sticking a, uh, you know, breakfast sandwich in the microwave, about that same. But the prep and to do it right and healthy and nutritional wise, the prep, the planning, the putting it together, getting it ready to freeze, it puts this Ninja Creamy on par effort wise, I would say with making a fancy omelet. Yeah. So you, you know, you got your eggs, you're mixing your eggs, you're dicing up your other things to add to the eggs and you're putting it all together. You cook it and then you got the whole mess to clean up. I would say I'd put it on par with that. So if you don't like doing that kind of cooking for yourself for breakfast, um, this might not be the right thing. Can you do it? Uh, if you're visually impaired or blind, I think you could. If you, if you cook omelets and if you're a person who cooks, 
I think you actually could because there's a lot about it that makes it um, um, doable. Um, but again, it's light years away from pulling a pre-made breakfast sandwich out of the freezer and microwaving it. So, so there's the verdict on that. I wish, I wish, uh, I could give you something, um, a little easier and say like, oh yeah, it's fabulous. Everybody should buy one. But really, I think it's just for certain people. Yeah. And maybe you're someone like me who kind of likes to try everything and then, um, oh, here's the thing, the creamy, they're out of stock all the time. So if you get it and you decide you don't like it, there is a used market for these things. So you could always sell it again. All right, next topic. We are going through the first time ever. I'm going to go through rapid fire what I ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm going to go through this really quick, not for the purpose of you memorizing and dissecting, but for you to just kind of get in the ball field with me and kind of get a sense of what is it and how is it that I eat. Then I'll go into how I've been feeling in this scale. So here we go. I'm going Monday through Sunday. Breakfast. Are you ready? Okay, Monday. I skipped breakfast. I was super busy with a friend. Tuesday, I ate my protein creamy, which was chocolate and raspberries. It was 400 calories. Wednesday, protein chocolate creamy ice cream thing uh, with spinach. It was 250 calories. Loved, loved, loved it. It had two cups of spinach in it. Thursday, I love that so much. I did the same. Friday, I did the same. Saturday, I did the same, but I made it pistachio flavor. Yeah, so I'm eating this creamy ice cream every single morning for breakfast. The only thing about the pistachio version is it didn't have as much fiber in it. And because it didn't have as much fiber in it, it didn't make me feel as full. Sunday, I got crazy and I made a mango version of it that I didn't like. Blech. <laughs> it was not very good, but I ate it anyway because it was there. I didn't want to waste it and it really wasn't bad. It just didn't. I used mango puree for it and it was just like, blech. yeah. Lunch. Yeah. So pretty much creamies all morning for breakfast. So same thing as having a protein shake protein smoothie. Lunch. I dined out with a friend and I had, this was the day I didn't have breakfast. Um, I ordered a, a chicken prosciutto dish with double asparagus. So I skipped the French fries and I had them do double asparagus. Tuesday, I did a chicken pesto dish, a full one. So that's um, a little bit of pasta, 80 grams of pasta. That's like a good old handful of pasta. Uh, four ounces of chicken, a small apple chopped up, and one tablespoon of pesto all mixed up. That is a big, big lunch. Um, when you put that all together, it fills up a huge bowl. Um, Wednesday, I ate the same thing, but I ate half of it in the morning, and then I ate the second half at 11.30 at night Wednesday. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> it was the first time ever I ate uh, part of a meal later. Thursday, I ate the same thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Friday, I got a little crazy. I did something different Friday. I pulled out a can of canned chicken. And uh, I got to tell you, Costco's canned chicken is good. And then I did avocado. I've been buying um, at Costco. They have these packs of avocado that are like 67 grams of avocado in individual packets. And yes, I am aware that there's more plastic because they're all individually packaged, but also my waste that I have in avocado is almost nothing. These packs of avocados last like three weeks in the fridge and um, they're portioned just great. So, so it was, I took a can of chicken, one of those things of avocado and a half a head of butter lettuce. I mixed the chicken and avocado together. I took my half a head of butter lettuce and then I just scooped some of this chicken in an avocado mix into this the lettuce and ate it like a taco. And it was actually really, really yummy. Saturday, I did the very same thing for dinner, but I used a full can of chicken. And Sunday was a crap. <laughs> Sunday was a crap day. <laughs> Sunday, I, I had a friend over. And we went to a lavender festival. And when we got, by the time we got there, I was starving for lunch. And I went to the Thai place. It was their little food trucks. And all the options were just terrible. Um, 
Yeah. And I ended up ordering pot stickers and a Thai iced tea. And so I had six little pot stickers that were fried. They were terrible. Um, and my Thai iced tea was just way too sugary sweet. And I only drank half of it and threw the other half away. So that was just a very disappointing dinner. So um, what was the one where I ate 1130 at night, Wednesday? Oh, that was lunch. That was lunch. Okay, dinner when we get to Wednesday, it'll be interesting. Okay, so dinner, dinner, here we go. Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. Dinner, oh yes, so dinner, I ate the second half of a, no, 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 dinner was a weird, I had another creamy. So I had a pistachio creamy um, for dinner and decided that's what I wanted. And I liked it. Um, Tuesday, I had some, the leftover chicken prosciutto from that restaurant that I got. I literally pulled out the cardboard box from the fridge. It was like a three ounce thing of chicken that had the marsala sauce that was like congealed to the chicken cold and a little layer of prosciutto on it. And the whole thing was just a hunk and a blob. And I took a fork and I just forked the thing like a popsicle (laughs) <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you this cold didn't heat it up or anything and then just ate that hunk of chicken off the fork like a popsicle so that was my dinner Tuesday I was totally fine with it Wednesday I went to uh, Seattle with my friend when I saw the uh, cello play at the cathedral um, I had the second half of my pasta lunch at 11 30 p.m when I got back from that so that was the thing where I met my friend to play the, hear the cello player, and it just so worked out that I didn't have access to any meals or any snacks um, for about six hours. And when I got home, I was starving. I hadn't had dinner. So that was when I ate the 11.30 p.m. I also ate about five Mentos. Yep. Okay, let's fly through this. Thursday, half a can of chicken with avocado, uh, ate a couple tablespoons of cottage cheese, and um, Friday, full can of chicken and a second cremini chocolate, two slices of Havarti. Is that not weird? Saturday, I had a, a half of my chicken pesto dish. And uh, oh, I had a friend over. My friend over Saturday, we drank a half bottle of wine or we shared a bottle of wine, some cheese, some cherries. And the next morning, I drink so little that a half bottle of white wine it just wrecked my sleep and I felt horrible and my stomach hurt in the middle of the night. And the next morning I told my friend, I was like, I told her, I was like, I don't feel very good. And she's like, neither do I. I'm like, it was just one bottle of white wine we shared. And she's like, yeah, we're not drinking anything tonight. And I was like, okay, good. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, And then Sunday she and I went out and I actually Sunday had a full pub burger, and some French fries. I drank water with dinner. The French fries were super salty. And three hours later, I still felt stuffed. Holy cow. There we go. That took way longer than I thought it would. Though that just gets you in the ballpark of kind of what, what I ate. So let's take a look at the results at the start of the week. Here's this numbers on the scale. At the start of the week, Monday, I weighed in at 162.4. At the end of the week, the following Monday morning, I weighed in at 161.2. So I had a net loss of 1.2 pounds this week. Do, do, do. Finally, officially made that total loss of 20, 20.2 pounds. I made the 20 pound mark. Friggin' finally. <laughs> now, this is what, this is week 13, 20 pounds, 13. That's amazing. That's awesome. It's, I'm celebrating. It's, it's exciting. These milestones, they're just a number, but they're amazing. And, and, and they're, it's cool. It's super cool. And here's the crazy thing is with this whole process is day after day after day, from one day to the next, from one week to the next, I never feel really any different each week. Now, long-term, back it up, look at the whole 13 weeks. 
I do have more energy. I am stronger. My clothes are fitting better. My skin, oh my gosh, you guys, my skin looks so much better. Like seriously, my skin on my hands and face looks at least five years younger. Like I am, and I think that's due to making sure I get healthy fats um, and food and no alcohol, practically no alcohol, except for that stupid half bottle of wine. It wasn't even worth it. <laughs> it was not worth it. Um, so when you look back at, you know, where was I 13 weeks ago compared to now? Way better. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so 20 pounds lost. How much further am I going to go down on the scale? I have decided. My biggest litmus test is going to be what can I grab on my belly? Right now, I can grab more fat on my belly than I'm happy with. Um, I can, there's still a decent, decent amount there. I want to reduce that down and continue to eat high protein so that I don't lose the muscle because I'm keeping muscle on my body. Um, I'm not going to go down as low as I was originally. You know, like if I look at pictures of myself and I'm like, oh, I like that. I like that. Like, I don't think that number is going to be that low because I actually have more muscle on me now. So still working on that, but I decided that's what it is. My, my vanity, my vanity marker is how much fat I can grab on my belly. Um, and then next week, let's take a look at next week. I have three weeks ahead of me, essentially uninterrupted. And that word uninterrupted is really one of my banner words for the next few weeks. So I really can continue to do this journey really, really well. And hopefully nothing is going to interrupt me and I'll be able to stay on track, dialing it in. I'm going to use this time to find more meals this next few weeks that I enjoy that are balanced with the macros, that the fat, protein, fiber um, balance there. So what for me, that means I'm trying to get six to seven grams of fiber in every meal, 16 grams of fat in every meal, and 40 grams of protein in every single meal. So if I did it perfect, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner, that's pretty much what I'm doing. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, maybe a snack, maybe not then that puts me at about 40, 40, 40 grams of uh, protein in every single meal, breakfast included. Um, so I'm going to try to see if I can get a little more creative with more meals there because I've got a few dialed in really, really well, but I know I'll get sick of them um, after a while. Um, and then after those three weeks, I'm going to be taking a trip to Alabama to drop my son off uh, in for college, the home of the sweet tea, biscuits, and barbecue. So I'm going to start thinking about that and seeing what does that look like traveling in a town where um, the access to food is different. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time in this little college town, kind of visiting some grocery stores, checking out some of the restaurants and getting a sense of what's normal down there. Um, I did rent a and b so I'll have a kitchen, so I'll, I'll be able to... Um, control my food. I don't like using the word control because I know I'm a control freak, um, <laughs> but I'll own it. Uh, so I'll be able to control my food and my food budget a little easier um, because I have a kitchen and and I'm traveling by myself because um, uh, my son will be doing his own college thing. Um, so when you're by yourself, I'll eat at restaurants by myself, but it's just never, it's not that euphoric wonderful social experience. <laughs> so um, uh, anyhow, so that'll be fun. That'll be a fun report out in a few weeks to see what is that like. And I know in the South, I've, I've done more travel in the South than most people from Seattle have, but I've spent way, way less time in the South than a lot of people have too. So um, it'll be fun for me to actually experience that real time in real person and compare it to the food options I have in Seattle and see um, kind of what I come up with from there as far as if if you live down there and um, how it's different. Because I think a lot of times we, uh, we can sometimes really say someone should or shouldn't eat a certain way when we really have no clue of what the food options are 
in that area for that person. And that's a very, very huge and real piece. So there we go. Another week, 1.2 pounds down, total loss 20.2. That's pretty exciting. Uh, we will report back, we, as if I'm more than one person. I'll report back in another week from now on week 14, and we're just keep plugging away. Woo! All right. Have a great day. If you want me to help you with this similar journey, reach out to me, couch2active.com. I can help you dial in your macros. I can help you figure out, you know, what you should or shouldn't be eating calorie wise, help you figure out what's the first few things you can do to get the best results for you as quickly as possible in a way that you also love your life. Loved, love to do that uh, for you. And again, we don't do any fads or anything like that. We're going for the holy grail of doing it in a way where you actually love your life. There we go. We'll see you next week. Same time. Bye-bye now.